Hello and good evening, everybody. Good evening. Praise and thank God for all of you that are joining in tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen as we get ready. Everybody see. Can you all see my screen? Yes, okay, perfect, perfect. Well, come on in everybody. Those of you that are joining in, so glad to have you all. Um, I'm gonna give a couple more minutes um, and then we'll begin. Open and praying that everybody has had a good week so far. Um, I missed some of y'all since this morning uh, for prayer. So praise and thank God for you. Um, be brutally honest tonight. I'm going to try my best to get through Bible study tonight. I actually just left the dentist office. Um, and so we're going to try to push through as best as we can. Amen. Yeah, I'll pray for your pastor tonight. All right, so as we are getting ready to begin, um, again, we are going through the entire um going through the book of John, studying the book of John. So we're going to be selecting. So each Sunday, there'll be a different scripture. that will be coming from John, each Bible study. There'll be an emphasis on something that happened um, either within the Sunday uh, text or within John that needs to be uplifted for our discussion and for our learning and for our time together. And so um, I hope and pray that this has been a blessing to you thus far. And I hope and pray that it'll continue to be a blessing as we journey through this Lent season. Um, so uh, tonight, you know, we, we kick off uh, uh, again, reminding you that it, this is our theme for the um, entire Lent season of Believe. Um, and in the last, uh, second to last chapter in John, uh, he reminds us to do just that, to believe. John 20, 30. 31 teaches us that disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs and wonders, signs in addition to ones that were recorded in this book. So Jesus was doing a lot. But here, he, he, here here's the crux of, of why we do all of what we do. Verse 31, but these were written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. So again, everything we do is centered particularly on this text right here, this verse right here, is so that persons can believe. And so I hope and pray, and not only are you just inviting people to church, but even some people, um, invite them to Bible study. Um, invite them, send them the link, even afterwards, after it's over with. Um, this uh, should be uploaded to YouTube, um, last week's was already uploaded to YouTube. And so I invite for you to make sure you um, encourage persons uh, to get to know your God and get to know uh, our Lord a little bit better. As uh, those of you that are still coming in, we're going to go ahead and pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you tonight for who you are. We thank you, God, for being a God that has been with us and has carried us um, and watched over us all day long. As we get ready to journey through your word and in your word, I pray, Lord God, that you would guide us, that you would bless our time together um, as we seek to learn more about you and learn what it is that you would have for us to do, learn 
more about your word tonight. I pray, God, that you would guide our discussion. I pray, God, that you would anoint the ears of your, your people. And I pray, God, that you would anoint the hearts of your people to be receptive to what it is your word is teaching us tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and go forth. So believe. What does it mean to believe? So we're going to go through a little recap. We're going to kind of do this um, just about every week. So what does it mean to believe? What, 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 do, what does this mean? All right. Believe is this Greek word, pestuyo. It means literally to trust, like as in to obey, um, to believe, uh, like words and um, to enjoy the confidence of, like to confide in, to trust in, to, to, uh, to, to, to put hope or to obey or to follow. That's what it means. Like uh, that, that word believe is a verb. It is an action word. It, it, it requires movement believe it requires movement. Um, In John, it it occurs more than 100 times in the book of John, all right? And even more so, while Matthew, Mark, and Luke um, may use this other word. Uh, Anybody remember what that other word is that they use instead of believe? Anybody remember? Somebody. Faith. Faith. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. right. They use they use that word. Um, whereas John uses the word believe. Faith uh, is a noun, um, something you have. I have faith. Believe is something you do. I believe. It's an action word. All right. So recap of last week. Anybody remember um, well, what are the synoptic gospels or what is a synoptic gospel like? Anybody remember? Uh, the synoptic. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm, I can hear you, Marilyn. Okay, it's a uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the synoptic gospels, right? That's right. That's okay. right. Okay, and I Matthew. think you said something about them being in place in parallel columns. If they something of that nature. Yeah. So you like if you place the stories um, found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke um, uh, in parallel with one another, there would be some similarity. Uh, I think probably one of the ones that comes to mind is uh, the baptism of Jesus. Um, I forget exactly where where that's found at, Um, but if somebody wants to uh, look for it and grab it and throw it in the chat, that'd be great. But the um, baptism of Jesus is an example of the, um, there being, you see different nuances in how the stories are being told. Remember I said last week that this is like, uh, CNN, MSNBC, CBS News, and uh, Fox News. All of them are going to report on the same story, but each and every one of them is going to tell it just a little bit differently. <laughs> and one of them is going to tell it probably a whole lot more differently than the others. All right. Um, anybody remember who wrote the book of John? So somebody, somebody else, somebody else. One, John. <laughs> John. Okay, John. Which, which, which John is this? The one he loved. The one whom he loved. Who is he? Jesus. Jesus, the one whom Jesus loved. Okay, somebody tell me a little bit more about this John that Jesus loved. He was one of the disciples. That's right. He was one of the disciples. Uh-huh. John was one of the disciples, so he was with Jesus. Um, and uh, anybody tell me, um, we went through last week, uh, who is Jesus? Does anybody remember who is Jesus based off of our notes from last week? That's the son of God. Mm-hmm. He's the son of God. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. God himself, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so remember, remember last week, uh, anybody remember one of the passages we uplifted 
um, found in the book of John explaining who Jesus is. Okay. Was it John first chapter one through 14? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Um, that, 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 that line right there. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, Jesus is, is the son of God. Jesus was, um, was a son of God. Jesus, John teaches us that Jesus was both 100% God and 100% man. Um, John, remember, is writing um, this book to a group of new believers. And so one of the interesting things about the book of John is that you can utilize it no matter where you are on your Christian journey. Um, the book of John is a good place to get started. Um, if you want to read the Bible and get to know the Bible or get to know more about Jesus and get to know more about your faith, get to know more about what you believe. I wouldn't start with Paul's text. I wouldn't start with Genesis. You should get started with John as a Christian believer. And even if you've, as a new believer, if you, you know, if you just learning more about who God is, that's fine. But even if you're an old, older believer, you're a seasoned saint, um, and you've been in the words, you know, it backwards and forwards, trust me, you can go to the book of John and still find some new things to come out to learn more about who Jesus is. It's, I mean, it, 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 it's good enough to, um, to pull in the new believer and it's good enough to keep the attention of the season saint. All right. So that's the book of John. Anybody remember the, uh, the, the, I am statements. Anybody remember those? There's John seven of them. John 8, 58. Which Before one is Abraham that? Abraham was born, I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Mm-hmm. I am the light of the world. Mm-hmm. I am the resurrection. Mm-hmm. I am the true vine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of cheated and just wrote the verses down, didn't write all of them. <laughs> 635, 812, 858, 11, I am the door. 14, 6. I am the I'm the door. Or uh, uh there's another way that's said too. Uh, I'm, another yeah, way. yeah, no, no, I mean, but that that is right. That is right. I am the door. Yeah. So um, I am the bread of life found in John six. Uh, and it's referenced in verse 35, 41, 48 and 51. Mm -hmm. Give me a little bit more. Um, I am the light of the world. John eight twelve. 12. I am the door. John 10. 11. 11. Um, I am the door. I am a good shepherd is 10, 11. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm the good shepherd is 10, um, 10, 7, and also verse 9 as well. It's referenced there. I'm the resurrection, John 11. I'm the good shepherd, John 10, 11 and 14. Um, I am the way. Eleven twenty-five. Fourteen and six. Yep, John fourteen six. And I'm I am the true vine. John fifteen and uh, and one. So, all right, those of y'all that were at church on Sunday, I hope you guys took some good notes because it's time for a pop quiz. <laughs> All right. So Sunday, we went over when Jesus broke the rules um, found in John one, I'm um, John five verses one through nine. Um, uh, it, Jesus was at this place called the pool of Bethesda. Um, Bethesda means literally means the place of the flowing. It is where people that were sick gathered. This is where those who were forgotten about those who lived on the margins, they gathered there. They were lame people that were lame, people that were uh, had leprosy, people that had um, um, paralysis, people that had sickness and illness. This is where they hung out. 
Remember, Jesus was coming into town, into Jerusalem for a festival, a religious festival to celebrate um, uh, this religious festival, this Jewish religious festival. And while there, I noted uh, on Sunday that he did not go to the temple first. He did not go to go hang out with, with, with the leaders first. He didn't go to hang out with the rich folks. He went to go hang out with those who were, would have been considered forgotten about, those who were sick, those who other people didn't want to hang out with. He went to go hang out with them. And as a result, he runs into this guy who was sick, who was paralyzed, uh, who, who could not move, who could not walk. Um, he had been that way for how long? Anybody remember? Since birth. 38 years, 38 years. Mm -hmm. he, he had been in this condition for 38 years. And remember, this may seem like a long time to us, but 38 years is no, no time to the person that was there when creation was founded, who was there when there was nothing here and stepped out into nothing and declared, let there be, and there was. So this, this 38 years was a short amount of time. And what is interesting is that they worked and they dealt with this um, uh, within that time. They, 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 they understood that the, they were waiting for a moment for the water to be stirred in the pool, a moment. But much like they were waiting for that moment, the same way Jesus can move in an instant and a moment to change our life. And so there were three, three points I gave on Sunday. Um, number one, Jesus is not intimidated by how long you've been down. Again, this man was down for 38 years. The length of time or time, just in general, Jesus was not intimidated by that because here it is. He did this on the Sabbath day. And I said Sunday, I didn't have enough time to get deep into it. We're going to get deep into that tonight. Um, uh, he, he, he didn't care that it was on the Sabbath day. Um, he did it anyway. Um, two, he was not intimidated by the lies that we tell ourselves Sometimes we come up with excuses and lies and whatnot that keep us comfortable in the place and in the condition that we're in. But here it is. Jesus, was, you know, he, you can try to use all the excuses you want in the world. Jesus was not intimidated by the lies and excuses that we tell ourselves. Um, uh, I, 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 was, I was taught that excuses are tools of incompetence that are used to build monuments of nothing. And those that strive upon them seldom amount to anything. And so if you can, at all costs, avoid using excuses. All right. Thirdly, Jesus was not intimidated by our, our limitations, by our human physical limitations, no matter what they might be, no matter uh, uh, financially, um, emotionally, physically, psychologically, Jesus is not intimidated by that. So what? We don't have it. Trust and know God has it all. Jesus has it all and has all power and is not limited by our human limitations. All right. So, and the fact that he broke the rules for us, again, Jesus broke the rules for us. Um, so, something that kind of stood out to me. And as I said, like, you know, I didn't have enough time to really go into it on Sunday, but something really stood out to me as, as you read through John chapter number five, and I encourage you to, um, uh, I am, you know, I grew up, uh, my, my, my uh, childhood pastor, uh, the late Bishop Willie L. Jordan would say, uh, he would give his text and say, now, now read the whole chapter when you get home, you know, uh, it, it, it's important. I, I can only give you just a little bit of it. I, you know, we, and I gotta, you know, pick apart a, a portion of, uh, of a chapter or of a book um, in the Bible, but I encourage for you in your own personal devotion, read the whole chapter. If I'm preaching from something, read the whole chapter and a good idea for Bible study, and this isn't even in these notes, but a good idea for Bible study is that you're trying to get an understanding of a particular text. A good place to get started is to read the chapter before, and read the chapter after to understand what was happening before and to understand what was happening after the particular text that you're reading and learning from. It kind of will help you a little bit. Can Somebody I, has something to say? Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, I grew up in a, in a household where my mama said, you don't do 
certain things on the Sunday. And we later learned that it was a Sabbath day. You don't wash clothes. You don't do this and that. So why are we afraid to break the rules on the Sabbath day? <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, I'm going to get into that a little bit. So let's, <clears throat> let, 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 let's, let's buckle up and go on this ride together. Okay. All right. So key term, the Sabbath. All right. Anybody know what that means? He did what? What is it? The Sabbath. Anybody know what the term the Sabbath means? A day of rest or something? A day of rest. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Oh, rest. Anybody else tell me a little bit about the Sabbath? That's the day that God rested? It's the day that God rested. Okay. Um, Deacon, you want to give a little bit more about that? What happened there? He created the the heavens and the earth and everything in it in six days and on the seventh day he rested yep yep uh sister glory i see you got your hand raised you there sister glory no if you're talking you're on mute all right so sabbath so um, a few things to keep in mind. It was the last day of the week devoted to rest. And you all had had uplifted this, that this was a, um, a day of rest because God created the world. And, sent, um, and on the seventh day, the Bible says that, and he rested. All right. That's in Genesis. Um, and the creation story that he rested on the seventh day. All right. Well, Reverend Javon, can I ask a quick question, please? Sure. Who is that? Mary. Okay, go ahead. So you're absolutely right. He, uh, the world that Jesus, God performed everything up until the sixth day, as Michelle was saying, and the seventh day was considered, the Sabbath day was considered the day of rest. Now, I just had a question regarding Saturday versus Sunday, because that's where a lot of challenge came into my marriage because my husband was initially a part of just, you know, the Christian concept of Sunday being the day to worship. And then he started following another doctrine and he was talking about the Sabbath day was the wrong, you know, we had it wrong because we were in church on Sundays versus Sabbath. So is Sabbath considered Saturdays or is that just a holy day? Oh, y'all, y- y'all, y'all, y'all trying to get ahead of me. When- <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's one of the ones I really had. Uh, even now, yeah. he struggles with it. But I, okay, I, we'll get there. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we 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 we're gonna get there. But before tonight yeah. is over, with I hope and a good answer. Yeah. We can we can all have a good answer to that question. Okay. All right, a good mm-hmm. answer. All right. So for Jews, it was observed um, starting Friday evening, all the way through Saturday evening. Okay, so at sundown on Friday much like probably about now on a Friday, it would mm-hmm. be observed all the way through till Saturday evening. And as there was this idea for you to rest, not do anything, no work whatsoever. Don't, no, don't, don't do anything. And today it's observed still by Jews, observed by seven day Adventists, um, which is a Christian uh, um, denomination, seven day Adventists. Uh, Hebrew Israelites or um, other uh, other Judaizers, or these are persons that um, these are Christians that adopt Jewish customs. Um, and it, if you look in Exodus twenty verses eight through eleven, Exodus twenty verses eight through eleven, and I'm a I'm gonna pull it up here. All right, does anybody mind reading that for us? Okay. Okay. Remember, okay. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work. No. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. I'm reading what's on your screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the Mm -hmm. seventh day is a Sabbath to God your God. Don't do any work, not you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, 
nor your animals, not even the foreign guest visiting in your town. For in six days, God made the heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. So this, this is in the, um, anybody know where this is found? Uh, not just in Exodus, but anybody know where this is found, like in a collection of commandments? <laughs> The, oh, Ten the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. <laughs> the Ten Commandments. <laughs> yes. So this is found in the Ten Commandments as, as Moses, is, Moses receives these instructions from God to give to the people of God. A part of that in, in this list of commandments and instructions was to keep and maintain a day of rest, much like what God did um, in the creation of the world. All right. So... Can I? Okay, my hand is up. I guess. Go ahead, go ahead, Marilyn. <laughs> I'm a little confused about the six days because, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion. I don't see where it says work in a particular six days because you have people who have to work on Sunday. So, can God says just just work any six days, whatever that seven day is for you? Okay, so I seven days. I, I, I hear you kind of cutting in and out. What I'm going to ask is those of you, I know I'm going to ask questions. Just try to be quick to the button and hit the mute button and get yourself off mute if you want to say something. But um, if you're not speaking, make sure your uh, device is on mute. Um, and then if you want to speak, either you know, go ahead, raise your hand or just hit the unmute button and I'll be sure to acknowledge you. But yeah, Sister Marilyn, to your point, I'm going to kind of try to get to that a little bit um, uh, as far as um, that and then I'll actually I'll, t I'll tag on it now. So, what what Moses was doing was he received the instruction from God uh, that collectively uh, that there is one day that you as a people collectively okay. ought to keep holy. One day, and by, by that idea of being holy means like set apart um, from the from, so from the other stuff you do, all the work you do. Monday through Saturday, let that be there. But on, I'm sorry, Sunday through Sunday through Friday, let that be there. And then on Saturday, which is what um, was being proposed and what was understood by religious and Jewish scholars, was that Saturday was a Sabbath day, a day of rest. And as a result, that was collectively understood. All right. And I think um, you, you're applying our modern day understanding and our modern day conditions to what was happening, to what we're reading biblically that was happening at a particular time in history. Nothing wrong with that, but to understand what was happening then, it was a understanding, a collective understanding that the group had that Saturday was a holy day for them. And at, that day began at sundown on Friday, all the way through sundown on Saturday. All right. So does that help to kind of answer that a little bit? I'm going to get a little bit more into it, but for right now, is that okay? Sister yeah. Marilyn? Okay, good. All right. So somebody else got a question? Go ahead. Somebody else had a question? Mm, I think you answered it for me. I, okay. Yeah. All right. So why do we worship on Sunday? Why? I'll be honest with you. I have been in church all of my life and have always understood that we worship on Sunday as Christian believers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and, it, and, and, and there's there's a couple of different reasons and thoughts for this. Um, and I love the question that um, uh, Sister Mary had asked. Uh, uh, early and I'm, I'm, we're going to get to that. I think that's probably going to be one of the last things. So if you could just hold on um, a little while longer, uh, we'll get some help help coming on the way for you. All right. Okay. So why do we worship on Sunday? So Jesus resurrection took place on a Sunday. We understand that, right? That Jesus's resurrection took place on a Sunday. Matthew 12 and 40 uh, foretells this. All right. So 
Um, I, these scriptures aren't necessarily on the screen, but we don't, we're going to go through them. All right. Matthew 12, 40. I hope you all got your Bibles. Mm -hmm. All right. It says, for Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights. So will the son of man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. All right. So what's happening here? Jesus is giving, uh, um, um, is foretelling of the fact that he's going to end up having to uh, die and be buried and be, be dead for, for three days. All right. That's what Jesus is doing. He's foretelling this. Okay. Okay. Um, also in the Nicene Creed, which is uh, some churches uh, quote this. Um, um, it is, it, it was collectively made up by religious leaders, by not just religious leaders, but Christian um, leaders that uh, the church fathers um, came up with this and some other creeds that kind of helped to guide the things that we believe, that kind of um, put together the the, the several writings and sayings and um, different books that were just kind of floating around that church fathers molded and, and, and put together uh, these 66 that we that we hold up. Um, and they came up with this statement here that Jesus suffered death and was buried and rose on the third day. And so it was understood that this resurrection took place three days uh, later on a Sunday. If he died on Good Friday, he was resurrected on Sunday. Now, some of y'all are going, already going to ask, so maybe you're wondering, somebody may have asked you, well, if that's the case, then we should be worshiping on Monday. No. <laughs> no. The, the way it was counted was Friday was day one. He died day one. Day two, Saturday, he's in the grave. He's he's dead. He's in the grave. Well, actually, he put him in the grave Friday evening, but he, he's dead in the grave. So all day Saturday, um, old, old preacher would say he went to hell and preached a revival while down there uh, and snatched the keys from Satan and, <laughs> and came back and rose from the grave on Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Um, uh, that's that's three days. OK, that's three days. Um, Pentecost happened on a Sunday. Pentecost is found Acts two and one, uh, um, and 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 I, I, I'm a, I'm gonna ask does anybody know how? Uh, well, actually, let's read it first. Acts two and one. Let's go there. Okay, on the day of Pentecost. It says on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. All right. Are you saying, well, preacher, how do you get Sunday out of, out of that? All right. Pentecost. Anybody know what the word Pentecost means? Oh, used to know that. Anybody know what it means? Pentecost. All right. I'm gonna help you. Okay. Uh, that word penta, um, the beginning word, it, it's also uh, we utilize it to categorize the first five books of the Bible called what? The gospel. The gospel. Mm -mm, the gospel. First five books the of the Bible. Well, the, Pentateuch. the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch. Pentateuch. So the uh, first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. And that word Penta, um, it, it, it speaks to this idea of uh, in a category of fives, or in this case, it's 50 days later. Okay. After the resurrection of Jesus, Pentecost is 50 days later. So if you count Resurrection Sunday, 50 days from Resurrection Sunday, it's Pentecost Sunday. Every year. Every year. Every year we celebrate the resurrection. Pentecost is 50 days later. Pentecost Sunday is 50 days later. All right. 
Jesus's ascension happened on a Sunday when he went back up to, to heaven to be with God. His ascension happened on a Sunday. Acts 1, verses 6 through 11. It says, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses telling them about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After this saying, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into the heaven? Jesus has been taken up from you into heaven. But someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. All right. So this is post his resurrection. And he see, he's meeting with his, his people, his, his core, his disciples. And, 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 and he, he then leaves and departs from them. This happens. Anybody get, can take a guess on what, what day this happens? Oh, God. Um, Sunday. On a Sunday, yes. But what particular day do we celebrate that this happened? Not just Ascension Sunday, but just it's the... Resurrection Sunday? The Resurrection Sunday. Yep. So this happened. Okay. This happened post resurrection. After the resurrection, it happened on that Sunday. Same thing. And so the and, and these next ones are these are encounters that Jesus has with the disciples um, on the resurrection. The Great Commission, Matthew twenty eight nineteen through twenty, is another um, example of this happening. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have been giving you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. This was an encounter that Jesus had with his disciples um, that Matthew records uh, um, post his resurrection. So that same day, he's, he's, you know, he's meeting with all these folks in different places. All right. Luke 24, uh, 13. Let's go. There. All right. So again, Jesus has resurrected chapter 24 of Luke. Jesus has resurrected. Um, He's raised from the dead. Verse 13, it says that same day, two of Jesus's followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were taking they were talking about everything that had happened as they walked and discussed these things. Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you are walking along? All right. They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. One of them, Cleophas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. And then Jesus responds, what things? Things that happened to, the Jew, uh, to Jesus. A man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all people. But our leading priest and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who would come and rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. See right there? Then it says, then some woman from our group of his followers were at his tomb early 
this morning and they came back with an amazing report. See, see, all of this happened. This is a, this is on a resurrection day. So all of these things happen on resurrection. And so this was the way for the, the these new believers to commemorate and to honor what had taken place, this extraordinary act of Jesus's resurrection that had taken place, all right? So some other passages that, that, that speak to this, um, Acts 20 and seven. Anybody wanna read that for me? On the day, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard beyond me yeah. loud voice like a trumpet. Right, so this is John on, on an island of Patmos somewhere, uh, writing actually Acts 20. No, that should be Revelation, uh, Revelation 1. I'm sorry, I got the wrong passage there. Uh, that should be Re Revelation 1. Um, uh, where John is on an island of Patmos um, explaining as he gets this vision from God, he is, uh, somebody else find me, uh, Acts 20 and 7. As he gets his vision from God, he's explaining uh, that this happened on the Lord's day. And, and in the early church, there was this thing called the Lord's day. It wasn't just called, it was called the Lord. They called, referred to it as the Lord's day, um, as the first day of the week. Uh, and it became a customary practice to gather on the Lord's day. All right. Um, somebody first, have somebody have Acts 20, uh, verse seven. Yeah. Go ahead. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. All right. So Paul had church all day long. Paul was a long winded preacher. All right. I don't know if he'd be able to survive <laughs> in 2022 nowadays people are like all right reverend i got somewhere to go <laughs> uh, paul here paul here was preaching to the people and, and, and teaching them here it is these are new believers um who immediately took on this idea that it's important for us to gather on the lord's day on sunday on the first day of the week all right so this isn't just some practice that just kind of came up out of nowhere. This practice is still found in the word of God. All right. So this, this practice of gathering. Okay. Another thing, um, first Corinthians 16, two, anybody want to read that? On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when you, when I come to uh, collections will have, when I come to you, I guess it should be, or when I come, no collections will have to be made. Sorry. So, so this is Paul talking in first Corinthians 16 too. Paul is saying, um, and given instructions, this is instructions on giving, um, that, all right, every week, first day of the week, take some money of what the Lord has blessed you with, what the Lord has honored you with, what God has blessed with you with for your house. Take some money, set it aside, and so that it can be given for the collection for the church. All right? Preacher didn't make that up. That was God. <laughs> that was in the text. It, it's, it's in the Bible. It's here. So, so uh, I'm, I'm, I know that's a whole nother conversation. It's a whole nother but, one, but go ahead. It, it says a sum of money. You know, some people try to hold you to the 10%. It that's says not, a sum of money. That's another conversation. Or a whole another, another conversation. conversation. I'm not going to get too but, deep into that. But wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be like, okay, he, she's talking about tithe. He said that's an offering. That's an offering he's talking about, right? I'm not going to get too deep into that. Okay. okay. All I'm going to say tonight is that Paul was here addressing the fact that as they gathered together, they gathered on the first day of the week. 
which was Sunday. Amen. They gathered collectively together on the first day of the week, which was a Sunday. Now, as it relates to giving, I am a firm believer in tithing. Right. Yeah. I, I, I am a believer in it, but I am also a believer in generosity. And so um, for some people, tithing, 10% may not, you know, I do that blindly, whatever, and then still be evil, still be stingy, still be mm-hmm. <laughs> reluctant to, to be of, of help and assistance where, where it may be needed. And so um, to support God's church, I believe it's important to make sure that you do, as Paul says here in this text, set something aside. And then if, if you're not at that 10% level just yet, just keep on giving, you know, just keep on seeing God do what God does in your life. Just keep on doing that. And at some point in time, the Lord may will, will raise you up and you'll be like, okay, I can do this. I can get wherever you're at, whether you're giving 2%, 3%, 8%, 12%, 5%, whatever, give. What does the text here say? Set aside something. Amen. All right. So I said, I wasn't going to get too deep into that. There's a whole lot more I can talk about. I'll probably do some teaching and preaching on, on giving and, uh, and all of that at another point. All right. So, all right. So what, what, what's happening here is that these early Christians um, understood and knew that it was important for them to gather on Sunday. All right. That this was a practice that was, that, that, that was utilized for them to gather on Sunday. De- Deacon Michelle, mute your microphone. Um, it was important for them to gather on Sundays. Uh, Ignatius, who was a bishop of Antioch um, around the second century, okay? He was one, considered to be one of the church fathers. He wrote this, um, he wrote an epistle. Anybody know what a, an epistle is? A letter. A letter. A letter. A letter, that's right. An epistle oh. is a letter. So um, much like how Paul writes these letters to several churches, um, Ignatius, he was, he was considered to be a church father, came after Paul, um, writes these letters to encourage churches. Um, and he writes this one, and in it he writes, uh, if then those who have lived according to the ancient practices came uh, to the newness of hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but living in accordance with the Lord's day, that's that word again, the Lord's day, on which our life also arose through him and his death. So what Ignatius is saying is that the reason why we gather on Sunday is because it's to observe our Lord's death and our Lord's resurrection. Okay. Okay. It's another brother by the name of Justin Martyr. He was an early Christian apologist and a philosopher. He wrote this thing called, um, on the day called Sunday. And in it, he said, but Sunday is a day on which we all hold our common assembly because it is the first day which God having wrought a change in the darkness and matter made the world and Jesus Christ, our savior, on the same day rose from the dead. So we do this as a way to commemorate our Lord's resurrection, okay? Another thing that would happen as they gathered, here, here's another thing, um, communion would take place. So anybody grow up Catholic or go to Catholic school? I know somebody on this call. Got, is, I went to is, Catholic school for the first Catholic. three years of school. Yeah. Oh, first three. Okay. So you probably didn't get to take communion, but when would communion be taken? In some Catholic churches, I thought it was taken every Sunday. Every Sunday. Communion would be taken every Sunday. Um, it, it is, it, it is in that same light and that same vein. So they would gather and have communion on Sunday, the early church, would they, when they would gather together, um, uh, Paul talks about this in Acts, like, you know, I'm sorry, in Corinthians, as far as, you know, wasting the bread and all of this type of stuff and, you know, or, or people 
you know, trying to use this as an opportunity to get full, you know, communion as an opportunity to get full off of it and stuff. Um, uh, but, but they would gather on Sunday and they would have communion on the first day of the week. All right. So before we get to that, I know, I know, know y'all got questions. I know I said I was going to try to answer how do we deal with, how, how do we come up with this whole thing of us um, and, and how we worship? All right. Let's, uh, let's go to a couple more passages. All right. Uh, Colossians 2 and 16. All right. So here's an, uh, another Pauline text, uh, 2.16. It says... So the, so don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. So Paul is addressing and talking to these new believers who changed. Um, some of them were Christians. Others of them were Gentiles. And he, here's another thing that, that they did. They changed, um, particularly for, for those that were Jews, they changed um, their worship day so that they can align themselves, not only just with Jesus, but so that there can be a clear demarcation that I'm doing something new. And here's the other thing. In the beginning, some of them were keeping both. Mm. Some were actually keeping both in the early, early church, like when it was very first founded, because some of them were still Jews. Some still kept holy days, some didn't. And what Paul is saying is, is that, don't let nobody talk it down to you or condemn you because, you, you know, you, you, you're on the right path and don't get distracted by what other people are saying. If, you know, you need to keep the Sabbath and you got to come to this holy day. No, no, no. You stay on this path. You keep going. All right. Um, verse 17. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. And so Paul goes on to talk about in this chapter, like basically don't let anybody make you feel bad for being a Christian. Don't make anybody, don't let anybody make you feel bad for going to church on Sunday. Let me say that again. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for getting up out of your warm bed, putting on some clothes and going to church on Sunday. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for taking time out of your schedule to go and go to church virtually even on Sunday or on Tuesday or on Wednesday tonight or whenever. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for it. All right. Um, Hebrews chapter four. I'm not going to read the whole passage, um, the whole chapter, but I want you guys to take note of Hebrews chapter four. And so here, it's dealing with this idea of Sabbath and rest. Um, but I'll, I want you to take note that there is, there's this theme that's happening in these particular passages of, of, of you can still honor that, but we, we've changed and this is the pathway that we're on where we worship and we celebrate God on Sunday. Last, last one, Romans 14, verse number five. Romans 14, verse number five. All right, it says this, uh, verse number five, in the same way, some of you think one day is more holy than another, while others think every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced. In your own mind. Oh, uh, mute, mute your phone, uh, Sister Marilyn. I'm each sorry. Of you, each of you should be fully convinced that whichever day you choose is acceptable. Those who worship the Lord on a special day do it to honor him. Those who eat any kind of food do so to honor the Lord since they give thanks to God before eating. 
And those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it is to honor the Lord. If we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. What in the world are they saying here? Basically, don't let anybody make you feel bad for worshiping. On, you can worship God on Sunday. You should worship God. You can worship God on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can eat what you choose to eat and thank God for what it is that you eat. You can choose not to eat. Say, I'm going to fast and I'm going to do this every single Sunday. I'm not going to eat nothing. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm not even going to brush my teeth. No, please brush your teeth. But <laughs> it, 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 what the writer here is saying is that no matter what, choose a day, choose time to honor God. All right. So to Sister Mary's question um, about, you know, somebody trying to uh, say, well, you know, well, y'all doing it wrong because y'all worship on Sunday. No, that's not the case. My sister, my brother, if you choose to worship God on a, sa on a Saturday and, and, and let that be your Sabbath and to choose to do it in that way, in that realm, I don't believe you're wrong for you to choose to worship God that way. But for me, and I know it has worked for me, I'm going to choose to worship God and do that on Sunday. Um, but I'm also not going to limit my worship to Sunday. My worship will take place on Monday. My worship will take place on Tuesday. My worship will take place on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I worship God in the morning. I worship God in the afternoon. I worship God in the evening. I worship God. God may wake me up in the middle of the night. And while I'm, you know, it actually the Lord may use my child to wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> and when I go and pick up that baby, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I adore you. Um, sometimes God may use that as an opportunity to go uh, uh, draw me to a scripture um, to, to, to ponder on, to think on. Sometimes it just might be, you know, Lord, I thank you. Or sometimes just to appreciate God for who God is. Um, um, but, but my worship, I don't know about you. And I would encourage for you to embrace the same ought to not just be limited to Sunday, but you ought to know that I worship God throughout the week. And it's not just limited on Sunday. I just believe, I believe that it's important for us to gather. And as, as the word of God says, let us not forsake our forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Um, and for some of us, um, I know when the pandemic hit, uh, some of us were upset and we were throwing that scripture around saying, we got to be assembled together. Well, here it is. We're in a new day and age and we can assemble with somebody all the way across on the other end of the world and as believers of God and assemble together. And what, what, what are you saying, Pastor, is that it's important for us to know the importance of us to come together, to worship God together, to worship God together as a family. Uh, and it may look differently. Uh, some cases, these were house churches uh, in the early Christian day. These were house churches, so it was just families getting together and worshiping. And then Paul would write and send a letter to, to some of the leaders for them to kind of share amongst one another. And so it's important for us to know the importance of us coming together. We can worship God, and it can be done any day of the week. But we choose to worship God collectively on Sunday. And then also we chose to come together and worship God at 7 a.m. on Wednesday morning. We, can't, we chose to collectively come together and worship God tonight, seven o'clock at night, and, and have Bible study, and, and we can do the same. So um, I hope that helped to answer some of the questions that we had earlier on. I'm going to open it up. Are there any more questions? I just have one quick one, Pastor, and even if we have to pick it up next week. When mm -hmm. he says uh, it's not what uh, comes out of a man, but it's it's what goes in a man that defiles him. I'm sure he's not talking about anything digestible. Um, and I just wanted to hear, you know, what you, your, your, this, the word is saying about that. It's not what goes in a man that defiles, but it's what comes out of him. Yeah. So um, 
I've always taken that scripture and I can do a little, we can do a little bit more study on it um, at, at another time, but um, I've always taken that scripture to remind us um, to be careful of what we allow to come out of our mouths, mm -hmm. like what we say, um, and not even sometimes what we say, but sometimes how we say some stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's how I've always interpreted that. I've always, you know, what? Well, I agree with you, Pastor, because to me, it's like what comes out of my heart, because God is so concerned about my heart, and what comes out of that is what's going to defile me. Yeah. Any other questions? John Grizzard no. had a question when you were talking about when the Sabbath started and ended, like Friday mm -hmm. evening it started, and Saturday evening it ended, mm -hmm. so how they going to eat? I guess that I guess you cook ahead of time. <laughs> That's what I said. I guess you cooked ahead of time. Um, or I guess they cooked ahead of time. One of my uh, one of my coworkers is Jewish and uh he, he's still um uh he, he still um uh acknowledges the Sabbath. Uh, and still goes to um, sometimes they may have service on Friday night and like, you know, in modern day uh, Judaism, um, there are some communities where they live in a community together. Um, and so on the Sabbath day, they're not driving, they're not doing anything, they're walking around um, or they're in the house uh, before sundown so that they can um, properly acknowledge and keep holy the Sabbath. <laughs> Somebody else had a question? I'll take maybe one or two more. Go on once, go on it's twice. It's not a question, but it's sort of an observation because mm -hmm. all of those uh, instances of when Jesus showed up or the resurrection or they all occurred on Sunday. So it's, it, it, they occurred on a Sunday. And mm -hmm. then as new believers got together, they sort of let that mark what was an important day, what was the Lord's day. But it didn't necessarily say you couldn't worship on any other day. Correct. Correct. And the only last quick question I have was the Jubilee was every 50 year in line with, was that just with the Jewish uh, population or was that? a universal spiritual concept every 50 years? So from my understanding, it was um, it, it was a Jewish uh, concept. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and even this whole idea of Sabbath, and I, I'll go, uh, I, I tell you guys this. Um, so keep in mind, uh, for Jews, it was this idea of resting on a Sabbath day. But even, and, and he, he, here's something, I, I'm not saying we get rid of this idea, idea of rest. It's important for us to, to take on rest. Um, you can't work, 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 work. If you do, you're going to die, die, die sooner, sooner, sooner. You got to rest. So let me encourage you, those of you that are, that are, that are present tonight, take your vacations. Don't work. <laughs> Don't try to work until you can't work no more. If you're able to retire and able to do it, go ahead. Enjoy it. Uh, the Grizzards, they are looking forward to later on this year. <laughs> <laughs> retire. <laughs> Rest. Um, take a break. Uh, as you read Psalms, there is a word called Selah that as you read through the Psalms, it is a word that you, you, you're not supposed to audibly say, but it is a denotation for you to take a break, for you to pause. So as you read a Psalm and you see Selah, don't just keep reading, pause for a second. Sabbath, <laughs> the seventh day was a day of rest, but not only was a seventh day a day of rest, the seventh year was a year of rest and so they would give their land opportunity to rest and they wouldn't plan 
what are you trying to say, preacher? Is that it's okay to maintain and like idea wise what that means um, as far as rest. And I want to encourage you that if you have an opportunity to rest, take it. Listen, I want y'all to hear me clearly. Your pastor is going to take his rest. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor, I want to I want to thank you for this particular lesson because I know for myself, even though I I believe in the Sunday being the Sabbath day, and I, I believe in resting and giving God praise and all that, but I do know that if somebody knocked on my door and they were hungry, I would stop and cook for them. Because I believe that that's how Jesus broke the rule. Yeah, well, he and, and here, here's the thing. He did satisfy his own self. He did something here's the thing. Sunday, Sunday was not the Sabbath day. Right. But so, so, Sunday wasn't the Sabbath day. So it wasn't necessarily Sunday was a day of rest um, for the new Christians. For again, as I said, for many of them, some of them were, were former Jews or still maintain some of their Jewish uh, customs. So Saturday was still the, the Saturday, the day of rest, but Sunday was the day that they gathered to worship and to celebrate. And they would even cook, prepare a meal together. And so I, I don't want you thinking that Sunday is a Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. Sunday is our day of worship. And so the Sabbath is still the Sabbath. That, 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 can, still, that can still be Saturday. But for okay, us as new okay, believers, okay. We, we celebrate. Okay, so you're saying it's any sixth day, any seventh day, right? I'm just, no, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that for us as new believers, uh -huh. um, and not, not new believers, but for us as believers, as believers, we acknowledge and we come together for our worship collectively on Sunday. And as far as the Sabbath is concerned, what I'm saying is, is that you should take a rest, a day of rest. You should take okay. a time of rest. Okay. Um, uh, and whatever that looks like. Um, oh. I, I, in, in the preacher world and clergy world, Monday for many is considered the preacher's Sabbath. Oh, okay. okay. Where the preacher doesn't do anything. Now, I, I still work uh, a, a, another full-time job, so... I, I'm, I'm at that job on Monday, but, but the idea is that, that you should take a day where you rest. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Yep. So I, I hope, I hope that was, uh, this has been a blessing for you guys tonight. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I encourage for you to please, please, please um, encourage, tell somebody about Bible study, tell somebody about Sunday worship, um, invite them to church. Uh, I'm excited about this Lent season. Please send me names. I've gotten some, um, that were praying for it and believing that God will save them before, um, and, and God will touch their hearts. So they'll get to that person, will get to know God in a much better way and believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, um, before resurrection and, um, or even by resurrection. And we believe God and we expect God we want to pray God, pray to God for um, new members, uh, for new persons to join and become a part of our church family, but ultimately become a part of the big church family, God's church. So I invite for you to continue to send those names so I, I can pray for them. We all can pray for them. Um, and then keep in prayer for your friends and family that are unsaved, that need to know God. And then um, uh, one more announcement. And I uh so this Tuesday, we're, we're going to, um, uh, there's going to be some cleanup happening with some volunteers at the church. And um, I'm not saying anybody has to come on Tuesday, but, you know, with the cleanup or whatever. Uh, but Brother John, is there a need on Saturday to help with getting, or Deacon Hart, is there a need on Saturday to help with getting some of this stuff together? Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll come in first to let you know that the dumpster will be there on Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. um, we got that order already. Now, for me, if there's anything coming from any different floors that need to come down, um, otherwise everything that needs to be removed that Michelle's talking about is in the basement. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we're good then. All right. Don't worry about that announcement. Amen. I was wondering if there are things on maybe the first and second floor, we could tag them so people would know this can go and mm -hmm. maybe we could do that Saturday. Is there a need for help? This is why I'm, I'm asking no. right now. No, okay. I don't think so. 
Okay. All right. Can I, Why don't we uh, talk Reverend, about can that I, at the uh, council meeting uh, tomorrow night? Okay. Okay. I was just asking why we have people here tonight um, to see if there was any, but cool. All right. Um, God bless y'all tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask um, uh, Sister Mary, are you still on? You mind praying us out yeah. tonight? Not a problem at all. I hope and pray my friend I invited Verna Smiley is on and then I'll just go into prayer. Verna, are you on? Maybe she didn't make it tonight. Okay, Reverend. Now let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this evening to the throne of grace, we come lifting up the name of Jesus. We thank and praise you for the word and the study tonight. 